introduced by Sue Barker. Good afternoon. Rugby League dominates our programme with the second semi-final of the Regal Trophy. And this afternoon we could be in for a real thriller, as who could forget last year's dramatic meeting in the final of this competition between Castleford and Wigan. The mighty Wigan remain the team to beat after another great season, when it seemed no one could stop them. Their domestic and international success was rewarded when they were named BBC's Team of the Year. However, just one piece of silverware eluded them in 1994, the Regal Trophy, which was won in spectacular fashion. Michael, he's got an open up out here, he gets into Blackmore, he's going himself in the coaster! Against the odds, Wigan were beaten in the final by their opponents today, Castleford. As we await the rematch, waiting in the final are Warrington, who yesterday overwhelmed Widnes by 30 points to four. We'll be live at Central Park for the start of that semi-final Wigan against Castleford in just a moment. Also this afternoon during half-time, short track speed skating with highlights from the finals of the British Championships. But now, just before we move on, some overnight news from Australia. In the World Series Cup final, the first of the three one-day internationals, which really now has been turned into nothing more than an exhibition, Australia have beaten the Australian A team by five wickets in Sydney. The senior side sealed their victory off the final ball. Michael Slater top-scored with 92. Meanwhile, in Bangalore, England A finished the second day of the first test against India A in a strong position at 153 for three. Earlier on, Richard Stemp had taken four more wickets to finish with figures of six for 83 as India were dismissed for 300. So who will join Warrington in the final of the Regal Trophy? Wigan, who today are making their ninth semi-final appearance in this competition, or will last year's winners Castleford once again upset the form book? Let's now go live to Central Park for the start of the first half. The commentators are Terry Flanagan, Steve Sims, but first, Ray French. Arguments raging between the fans as to whether Wigan should relocate to a new multi-million pound stadium, but Central Park still the traditional home of the league champions. Warrington running out convincing 30 points to four winners over Witness yesterday, while in those quarter-final ties, grandstand viewers were given a taste of Castleford's class in that 34-14 defeat of Leeds, and here at Central Park, over 23,000 fans on the edge of their seats before Wigan eased out St Helens. Central Park accustomed to housing big crowds and another passionate one here this afternoon. Both coaches, Wigan's Graham West and Castleford's John Joyner, were a little earlier both respectful of the opposition and John Joyner especially well aware that Wigan are the yardstick for every team. They've been uh, the yardstick over the last six, seven years about winning trophies, about winning games and it's, uh, you know, all credit to Wigan, it's up to us to catch them up and take over that pedestal. They've had some good form leading up to this game and uh, they were a very good side, very skillful, very fast and very fit. Uh, we're, we're expecting a very tough game. Last year's history now, well, that would count for a lot this season, I think. It's what happens today on the, uh, the 26 players that's out there, who's prepared the best and who gives you the best effort. You confident? 
Um, very confident. They, they've trained well. Uh, it's just a matter of putting it together on the park today. We know we're in for a tough game, uh, but my team are tough as well. Wigan aiming for a third successive final and the fifth final in eight years, but Casaverde are perhaps one of the most difficult hurdles they've faced in recent seasons. And the Yorkshiremen, well, might they be confident after that 33-2 defeat of Wigan last season, but coach John Joyner, he won't forget that defeat by Wigan in the 1990 semi-final. Wigan have the advantage in the five clashes to date, but somehow I don't think history will count for much in this match. It's so evenly balanced here at Central Park. Castleford coming out uh, first. They stayed overnight here in Wigan, so they've no doubt sampled the atmosphere. Dean uh, Sampson, one of the power men in the quarter-final. Andy here and led out, as usual, by Lee Crooks. Ian Morrison, the opening try scorer and the, the Wigan fans according them a nice round of applause. The pitch in uh, good condition. The sheets were put on overnight to stop any frost, but uh, they never came. And Wigan now about to take centre stage. The team, as John Joyner said, everyone in Rugby League, World Rugby League now in fact, has to beat. Power pack players, Neil Cowie, Phil Clark back to action. Sean Edwards there, with a lot of interest in his uh, knee injury. Will he last the 80 minutes? Those Wigan youngsters are hopeful that he does. Jason Robinson. Wigan coach Graham West welcomes back, as we said, two of his key players. Ex All Black, by Inga to Ingamala, returns to terrorise defenders after recovering from a knee injury. And following a similar complaint, skipper Sean Edwards lines up at scrum half hoping, no doubt, to control the midfield. For Castleford, teenage Jason Flowers continues to deputise for Graham Stedman at full-back, and Wigan will have to keep a check on that half-back pairing of Tony Smith, selected for Great Britain Sevens this year, and Tony Kemp, the Kiwi, they've rattled up 22 tries between them this season. Two gentlemen who have played together many times for Great Britain, Number seven, Wigan halfback maestro Sean Edwards, and Lee Crooks, one of the best ball distributors in world rugby. Referee Stuart Cummings from uh, Witness, four seasons, as a grade one official. And the little mascot there in the black and yellow for Castleford. Little Gregory Eden, whose father, Phil, the Castleford centre, is watching this game from hospital. And no doubt Phil Eden is hoping that this Castleford side pull off another win as they did last season. Well, uh, Terry, you've had uh, two selections so far. You've come up with two winners. What's your third? Well, call me old-fashioned and crazy, Ray, but I'm going for the underdogs Castleford today. I think their team spirit which underpins a lot of their good performances is uh, on top of the game, and this front row of theirs is in fine form. Steve, Halifax coach, you have yet to play Wigan. Uh, have they any weaknesses? Well, uh, maybe in the front row at this stage, Terry O'Connor and Neil Cowie. Uh, they may miss Garrett up front as uh, the, uh, the Castleford pairing of Crooks and Sanson are probably the form uh, front row uh, pairing in the competition at this stage. Wonderful kick from Frano Botica. Wigan fans roaring their support. And Wigan, a vital try and a goal on that half-time. Smack on the half-time whistle there. Martin O'Fires, dash and dive. Henry Paul's initial break. Phil Clark, a lot of hard work there. And both these sides will need plenty of rest. And I'm sure those fans have enjoyed the first 40 minutes, but I think we're even more for the next 40. Well, as expected, a highly competitive game and uh, an exciting second half to look forward to. We'll be going back there shortly. But in the meantime, we're going speed skating, short track, that is, for the People's Phone British Championship, which has been taking place in Guildford over the last couple of days. Challenging for the overall title were Nicky Gooch, the Olympic bronze medalist, Matt Jasper and the experienced Wilf O'Reilly. Reporting from Guildford is Paul Dickinson. Who better to explain the techniques and tactics of short track than Nicky Gooch, defending British champion on his home track at the Guildford Spectrum, where he works as well as trains. 
Just going to go to the start, hope to get a good start, but I've got a couple of fast sprinters on the line with me. We'll see how it goes. Ready? Got away a reasonable start, sitting in second place. Got to watch for the man behind me, come up the inside, around the outside. Yeah. There's a guy coming round the outside. I'm gonna make a move up the inside. Now I'm gonna cover the track. Somebody come on the inside of me. Go up the inside again to the line. The British women's title was won for the fifth successive year by Debbie Palmer. Recent training with the men has obviously paid dividends. It's helped me tremendously just um, being, being able to go the same speed as them and having somebody to, to pull me along, I've had them to sort of strive for, then it's, it's helped me. Um, over here, you don't, I don't often get to skate to my full speed, but with the men there, they help pull me around and I get more practice at skating at, at my top speed. The men race over four distances to decide their championship and the first, the 1500 metres, went according to form. Nicky Gooch was relieved to get maximum points. Five points in the bag. I'm sure they're going to come in handy later. Is it making a difference being on home territory? Um, not really, no. I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, you're your home rink, and it makes a big difference, but I don't think it does. The ice conditions can vary from day to day, and when you're racing, one ice rink's pretty much the same as the other. Three Nottingham skaters in this 500 meter sprint now, up against Nicky Gooch, wearing the blue helmet there to show he's the overall points leader. And straight away, Jamie Fern in the lead. Four and a half laps of this track, so there's not a lot of time to think about tactics. Gary Noble in second place, Matt Jasper at the back, but Jasper coming through tightly on Gooch. These bends is where problems can occur. Gooch coming through now into second place. The next time round, they're going to hear the bell. Matt Jasper in third place, but Jamie Fern really bidding for glory now. And good changing direction, and he's gone over. That is real drama. So that leaves Jamie Fern and Matt Jasper. This is going to be a very close finish. Well, look at this. Jamie Fern, third overall last year, thinks he's got that one. But let's see that again. Nicky Gooch on the inside, tried to change direction. He lost his blade on the ice. So his chances of glory in the 500 metres totally gone. And what about this for a finish? It's very, very close. I think Jasper may have it. In fact, Matt Jasper confirmed as the winner, but only just. He won by the thickness of a blade. Matt, that was a nail-biting finish. Uh, it was very, very close. I'd like to have a look at the photo finish later. I think Jamie Fern actually thought he'd got it. He was very close. I mean, I just had the speed probably coming out the last bend. Jamie had a bit of a stumble, so I was there to take advantage of it, really. What about Nicky Gooch? We were both... Sort of, we had a lot of speed, but we didn't know where to put it. And we were both sort of in and out of each other, and we didn't really know what to do. But I don't know, did Nicky fall or...? Nicky went, yes. Yeah, it's bad. Like, I think we were going quite quick, so... It's just one of those things in sprinting. <laughs> Six laps to go now in this 1,000 metres and Matt Jasper looking very comfortable in the lead there from Nicky Gooch, then Wilf O'Reilly, then Robert Mitchell of Peterborough. And Gooch really beginning to wind it up now. O'Reilly tracking him in second place. The point situation is fascinating with just one event to go after this one. Gooch actually got up to finish that 500 metres after falling, so he gained one point. His total is six, but Matt Jasper is two points ahead. Uh, Gooch gaining experience with every season. Remember, he's an Olympic medalist. He's being tracked by O'Reilly, a former Olympic champion. In fact, O'Reilly in a bit of trouble there. Jasper coming through now. The three of them locked together as they hear the bell. O'Reilly losing touch. Robert Mitchell is out of it totally. But look at this. Can Jasper get inside him? It looks as though Gooch is in control. He's going to take this one and relieved, I'm sure, to gain maximum points. 
Nicky, you look much more confident in the last race, but you have put yourself under a bit of pressure to retain your title. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. I mean, I'm equal points with Matt, but uh, I mean, the 500 metres didn't quite go my way. I uh, lost an edge on my right skate, and it's, I was finding it very hard to skate. And then I closed on Jamie very quickly, and I had to, like, jump out of the way of him. Otherwise, it might have been a bit of a disqualification. So, but that's how it goes. But, yeah, I mean, I'm starting to feel it in my legs, but that race went well. And, yeah, 3,000 metres is yeah, one of my strongest distances, and everyone out there knows it. So uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, I should come out on top. <laughs> Just under 700 metres to go in what should be a dramatic climax to these championships. Nicky Gooch in the lead, being tracked by Matt Jasper. They're both on 11 points. So whoever gets the better of these two, well, they're not going to win the title. Jamie Fern in the lead's got no chance. Wilfo Riley, he's got points. But the championship will be decided by the men in second and third place at the moment. Tied at the top of the table. Jamie Fern skated well throughout these championships. There's 3,000 metres a distance at which Nicky Gooch still wearing the blue helmet because he's won two events. He unofficially broke the world record in this distance last year. So Matt Jasper in second place knows just how strong he is. It's going to be all decided in the next 10 seconds or so. And Matt Jasper takes him on the inside. Wilfer Riley moving into second place. This is going to be so close at the end. Matt Jasper's going to win. Nicky Gooch contents himself with third place in that final event. But Matt Jasper took the opportunity. He jumped all over Gooch on the inside on that last lap. He becomes British champion. A former champion there, Wilf O'Reilly, embraces the new champion. The ice belongs to Matt Jasper here in Guildford. So 13 laps to go and the pace was being picked up. I felt very good and Nicky was in the lead. I thought, oh, it's looking pretty good for me, so I suppose from 13 to go, I had a feeling that the trophy was going home. An Olympic medalist and a world champion behind you in the British Championship, so that's got to be really good for you. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, will and Nicky are both skating very well. We've got the Europeans coming up next week. So perhaps the old man and the big head, so that they've been called in the local press, and they are going to give us all a run for our money in the Europeans, so that's what we're looking for. Matt Jasper taking the People's Phone British Championship trophy. Gooch, perhaps a little shell shock, takes second. Wilf O'Reilly in third, and British short track speed skating looking in good shape as they now look forward to the European and World Championships. Well, disappointment for the defending champion Nicky Gooch, but sweet revenge for Matt Jasper. Congratulations to him. Well, from speed skating, uh, we next turn our attention to figure skating and the European Championships, where Britain's best chance of success lies with Stephen Cousins. The champions take place in Dortmund. Our coverage begins on Wednesday, the 1st of February. But uh, after an exciting first half where Wigan lead 14 points to six, let's now go back to Central Park for the second half. The commentators once again are Terry Flanagan, Steve Sims, but first Ray French. Thank you, Sue. Certainly enough uh, incidents in this uh, first half to last us uh, a week, but I'm sure the next 40 minutes will produce even more. And a lot of controversy, I think, uh, Terry. Uh, loads of discussion on this try, Ray. Uh, just going down on the line, but I must go with the referee Cummins, who was spot on there in the right-hand side of the picture. He was spot on with Cummins, and I must go with him on that one. If the ball actually touches the whitewash, uh, Steve, then that is a try, isn't it? Even if it's pulled back, as it seemed to do there. It is. It's only got to go on the line, and it, as you said, if it's pulled back, it is a try. I think what Terry, what you said, Terry, is a good call that. The referee, even on this try and on the on the um, on the Kemp try, the referee is right on the spot, and that's where a referee should be. He hasn't got the advantage of slow motion uh, replay and all that. You know, it's, it's very hard. I think maybe it was on the line once again. There, it's close, but the, the referee's there. He's on the spot. He's got to make the decision. Yeah, I agree with you there, uh, Steve. Uh, well, fire though. He just came into the game like a rocket, and that created those points at the back end of the first half. And I'm sure these uh, players will have. Uh wanted that 10 minute rest because an interesting statistic uh, Steve I mean you're a coach you uh, sort of uh, live or die by uh, statistics the ball was actually in play in that first half for 31 minutes I can't remember uh, a game like that before 
you know, for two top uh, two clubs, the top two clubs in uh, the, the Premiership at this stage probably, uh, for 31 minutes of play at, at, a, at a lightning pace, um, it's, it's just unbelievable. And, th and they have done very well. Very few of these uh, spectators will want to leave early. And I'm sure Lee Crooks is determined to uh, make sure that they don't. And he'll want to stop this man, Martin Afire. How many times have we seen him here at Central Park with one sudden dramatic intervention change the course of a game? <laughs> he's not bothered about 31 minutes action as long as he's got his bottle. There it is, the final whistle. Wigan avenged that humiliating defeat in the final by Carterford last season move on to the third successive Regal Trophy final and the eighth one in all it was that man Martin of Fire his hat-trick that proved one of the big problems for Castleford Wigan must be favourites but I'm sure Warrington will give them a rare old battle when they meet in that final at the McAlpine Stadium at Huddersfield in a couple of weeks time all friends after the match a wonderful exhibition of rugby, power play in the middle, speed on the outside, but Wigan the victors. Wigan 34 and Castleford 6. Well, it was all Wigan in the second half and they go through to face Warrington in the final of the Regal Trophy, which you'll be able to see during Grandstand on January the 28th. But what more can you say about Wigan and this man, Martin O'Fire? He certainly knows how to score and he definitely knows how to celebrate. Hat trick of tries for O'Fire today. And after the excitement of that uh, fast moving game, I think we could all do with the rest. So enjoy your afternoon from all of the team here. Goodbye.